I am black, but comely. He said, I am black, but comely. He said, I'm black and I'm beautiful. That's what comely mean. What people say they black and beautiful. That's us. Hey, this is the truth. That's you take our time to read it. It's real interesting. They got a lot of two fans. And if y'all read it, y'all find out what's going on in the world today. Anytime. I love my black men. I love my black men. Honestly. I put my shit in park behind this. That's what I'm talking about. Let's do it. We're here for the Black Bike Week Festival. What are we doing? We're out here showing our people there's a better way. There's yeah. a better example. We on your street every day, day. But your past to go trip like a vacay. Stutter run, let it hit. I say, wait. I got pain they can see in my face. You can wait. I'm pay for them gates. Drop a pen, say a time and a place. We gon' roll up a doctor like skates. We gon' take you, no need for a mate. Bobby the fish and I'm hungry, no switching up. Hit a script, not a split phone, I'm blowing up. I can't lose to the spirits that's showing up. Growing the spirit, but they say I'm growing up. Super young, but the That's beautiful what you guys are doing. You guys are great. Amen. Named after America Vespucci, a Roman navigator, okay, a conquistador. When he came over here, he changed the land. The land was called Arsuri. He changed the land to his name. I'm gonna prove to you this is Bible prophecy. So, chapter 49 and verse 11. The inward thought is that their house shall continue forever. That's what the so called white man, all the other nations, they think that their, na their nation, the lands that they stole, everything. Everything that they do, they think it's gonna last forever, okay? They don't realize, hey, that kingdom's gonna come down. It's gonna fall, but right. And their dwelling places to all generations. That's your military bases, your embassies, and all that stuff from all the different countries that you see, okay? But mainly, we're gonna talk about your uh, slave master, the Americans, okay? All right, read. They call their lands after their own name. Do what? They call their lands after their own name. Right. So they call right. their lands after their own name, okay? So that's what America is called, named after America Vespucci. Africa is called, is named after Leo Spicio Africanus. If any of y'all from North Carolina, y'all been North to go to Raleigh, North Carolina, that's named after Sir Walter Raleigh, okay? If you, if, you, if you look at the colonies, the colonies got probably the same last name you have on your last name. That's the same last last name, okay? So, give me, I want uh, Hebrews, uh, you know what I want by Christ. Hebrews 7 and 14. So, I'm going to show you something real quick. Let me this thing here up real quick. Hallelujah. again. You got that for me? Hebrews 7, 4. Yeah. Of which tribe, Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Right, because all the priests came from the, the tribe of Levi. Right. That would be your so-called Haitians today, okay? So give me Revelations 1 and 1. So now we're going to read the book of Revelation. We're going to show you. Do you know what Christ looked like? Have you ever seen a depiction of what Christ really looked like? Have you? You? And you? I ain't talking about the Caucasian image that's in our grandma house or our mama house or whatever or what you saw on good times. So let's find out real quick. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So the root word of revelation is to reveal. So we're going to reveal Jesus Christ to you. Keep reading. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. We are the servants of God, okay? The so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Everybody's here on that side. Read. And he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God. I 
he resurrected, he wrote it down. He wants to read in his last days. That's why he called Tyler the Revelator. He revealed to us what's going to take place in his last days, because we're in the last days. Yeah. You see all the wars taking place over there on the so-called Middle East? Right. Well, I, I say so-called, it is not the Middle East. Okay, because you have a middle north, middle west, middle south, right? Now all that was called the land of Canaan, but which was called Northeast Africa, okay? That's what it was called, okay? We don't. And of the testimony of Jesus Christ, and of all things that he saw, we're going to find out what John the Revelator seen. Jump down to verse 10 real quick, read. Verse 10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Right, because today is the Lord's Sabbath day, okay? Which is from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. This is the day that we're, not, we're supposed to be worshiping God, okay? We're supposed to come together as a holy convocation. We're not supposed to be buying and selling. We ain't supposed to be partying and all that stuff. We're supposed to be going over the scriptures, learning, you know, who we are, teaching our people not to break God's commandments. But when we've been told that we were African American or Hispanic or Native American, guess what? We, we felt way off, okay? And our slave master, all they do is dumb us down and gave us this image. That image right there, this same little blue-eyed, green, green-eyed demon right there. That's what you see when you go to the churches, right? But we're going to prove this is a lie. Read what you got. And heard behind me a great voice, as of a trumpet. Christ spoke very loud, so this John the Revelator on the island of Patmos. He like, damn, we hear a loud voice sound like a trumpet right behind him, calling his name, right? He said, John, John, so if I call John name, what is your name, sis? Who? Shonda? And what's your name? Micah? Micah, you got a Hebrew name. And what's your name, brother? Corinthians. Corinthians? Corinthians. Corinthians. So you got, a, you got a name as the brothers from the church of Corinthians. Those are Israelites that spoke Greek, okay? So we got Corinth, we got R Rhonda, and we know What was the name? Shonda. Okay, I know I was close. Not Rhonda, but Shonda. And we got Micah, okay? So watch this. So if I said your name, you're going to turn around behind you, right? Right? Ain't that right, sis? Sis, what's your name? Daisha? Daisha. So if I called your name behind you, you're going to turn around and look, right? To see the name that spoke to you, right? Okay, so read that verse again. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book. That's the book of Revelations. Remember, he said he bear record of everything that he saw. Now he told him, write it down in a book. Why? Because we're going to forget who we are. We forgot our nationality. We forgot who our God is. So guess what? This, this thing had to be written down for us. Okay? All the white man did was took your history book of your foremother, forefathers, and he gave it to you in a Caucasian image. He watered it down, slaves obey your master and all this and that. He gave you a different understanding. But we're going to give you the truth today. Read. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. Asia, right. Jump down to verse, you know what I want, verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. Now I'm going to ask you, what, what type of texture is woolly hair? What texture is woolly hair? Touch the, touch the top of your heads real quick. Touch your beard, your head. That's woolly hair, okay? Hair of Negro. That's the Negro hair, okay? It's woolly. Not, not the dog stringy goat hair, okay? Not that. Not Esau hair. Read. As white as snow. You mean white? It was fully gray, read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now, why is Christ's eyes red like the, like the flame of fire? He wasn't shooting no laser beams like Cyclops, okay? We gotta find out why his eyes was red, right? You got that for me? Get that from Genesis 49 and 12. So now we gotta find out why Christ, the whites of his eyes is going into his eyes with the red, okay? The dark, the whites of the eyes is dark red or brown, right? Read. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. Yeah. His eyes shall be red with wine. Christ's eyes was red with wine. Do you understand that, brother? The whites of Christ's eyes was red like wine, okay? Why? Because Christ, he drank wine too. Remember his first miracle? He changed water into wine. You don't think he drank the wine? He drank wine. They called him a wine paper, okay? He drank wine, but he drank it in moderation. He didn't get drunk. Read. 
Verse 14, verse 15. And his feet, like it's a fine bird. Now Christ's feet. They said, look at the bottom of Christ's feet. So if I look at your feet, the rest of your feet is the same color the rest of your body, right? What color is brass? If I take brass, right, or, or bronze, what color is that? Brown, right? So that's like our complexion, right? But we little, we, a, a lot of us look different shades of brown. We all pretty much the same complexion, right? Let's find out how brown Christ was. Read. As if they burned in a furnace. So if I take that brown and I put it in the furnace or in the oven, what color is it going to get? You burn it in the oven, what color is it going to get? Huh? It's going to set on the mic real quick, sis. That's, that's what we talked about. Y'all remember all the all the uh, the apostles, the, all the disciples in them, all of them had that hair. Oh yeah, watch this right here. This is the this is the definition. The definition of wool. Curly hair as of a Negro. Yeah, they had that from show them, show them in the crowd there. Your cup, you walk up there and show them. Show them in the crowd. You see that right there? They don't want you to know that that's in the old encyclopedia, okay? But they keep that stuff dumbed down for it. They always say you want to hide something from a Negro, put it in the book. Yeah. You couldn't read or write for over 400 years. Think, think about the generation before us. You had your grandma, most like your grandma couldn't read or write. That's why she might take you to open up her mail and read it to her. Because she couldn't read, she made the shop money, but she couldn't read that well, okay? So, read that verse again. And his feet, like unto fine bread, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Christ spoke very loud. He sp I'm, I'm speaking with a mic. He spoke loud. He might be spoke to thousands of people. So, if, like, you see somebody in the military, you got an NCO, a sergeant, a commander in front of the formation. He got to speak loud with authority so people can believe him. Okay? He wasn't speaking all soft and effeminate. Hell no. He wasn't doing that. Okay? So, now, give me, um, go to Job 30 and 30 real quick. Let me show you about our prophet Job. What color was Job? Job going to tell you his complexion, right? So, watch this right here. You got that for me? Job chapter 30 and verse 30. Yeah. My skin is black upon me. Say what? My skin is black upon me. You hear that? That's what Job the prophet said. My skin is black upon me. Okay? Read. Don't, don't stay in the same thing. And my bones are burned with heat. Right, his bones are burned with heat, meaning he was going through a famine. Remember, he was going through trials and tribulations. Remember, he was being tested. He was being tested by um by the most high God through Satan. Right? Alright, so now. Go to, give me, I want another color scripture here. Go, go to Psalms, I mean, uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5 real quick. So let's let's find out about Christ, one of his forefathers, right? King Solomon. What did the King Solomon, what did he look like when he walked the earth? Remember, every everybody was under subjection under him. That's when we had the kingdom of heaven here on the earth during that time and rule. Read what you got. This is, this is King David's son, okay? Read. Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. I am black. But comely. He said, I am black, but comely. So I'm black and I'm beautiful. That's what comely means. What people say they black and beautiful. That's us. We ain't talking about no 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 perm thing that we uh, dark and lovely and all that. No. He said, I'm I'm black and I'm beautiful. Read. Oh ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kadar. Because the tents of Kadar, that tribe of Kadar, they were of dark, dark complexion too. Read. These are Arabs, okay? Read. As the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me because I am black. He said, don't look upon me because I am black, because I'm dark skinned, read. Because the sun hath looked upon me. But what happened with us when we stand out here in this hot sun all day? What's going to happen when you go home later tonight? What's going to happen? All week, they're going to be like, oh, you was at the beach. We can tell you went over here to bike week. We can tell you went swimming or something because you know, came back dark because you've been exposed to the sun, okay? Meaning your body got melanin in it, okay? It just get darker, okay? The darker it get, the better it get. You don't just burn and turn red like a lobster, okay? All right, read that again. Look not upon me because I am black. Don't look upon me because I am black, okay? Why? Because everybody was dark skinned at this time in the beginning. I'm approved to you, read. Because the sun has looked upon me. He said, because the sun has looked upon me. Give me, you know, one Jeremiah 14 and 2. Get that for me real quick. Let's, let's read about the prophet Jeremiah. So I'm just going over these milk scriptures for y'all. Because some of y'all probably never knew this. Did you ever knew that was in the Bible? 
about us, about uh, the, uh, our forefathers and them, the prophets and them being of dark skin complexion. Have y'all heard that before? You ain't never heard that. All they want you to do in church is clap your hands, run around, and do a damn home run and slide the home plate. You know what plate they want you to slide to to put your money in that silver pan? So the, so the pastor, he can ride around in the Lexus. You know, like Creflo Dollar, he want that million, that million dollar plane so he can fly. And guess what? You struggling in the, in the every day, waking up, going through trials and tribulations. He just said, just put your money in the pot. <laughs> yeah. So that's what he do. Okay, that's how they fool us. But watch this right here. Let's read what Jeremiah say. Read. Jeremiah chapter 14 to verse 2. Judah morning. Judah, the tribe of Judah. Remember, y'all from the tribe of Judah. What tribe, what's your nationality according to the um, doing your job application? You put black, right? The, your, your headband is black, okay? Your do-rag, that's black. Your, you what you different shades of brown, okay? Black is just a color in the crayon box, okay? I always remember that. You greater than that, so read what you got. And the gates thereof language. He said, and the gates thereof is language. He said, so we going through trials and tribulations. Judah, he said, um, read it again from the top. Judah morning. Judah morning. When you're in morning, you go, it means you're sad. You're going through trials and tribulations. We're the ones that get gunned down in the street. We're the ones living in the ghetto slums and the projects, right? We get the worst condition. We're the last fire, last, last hire, first fired on the job. Really. And the gates thereof language. The gates, right? The gates, see these gates right here? What they do? They're here to protect us from getting hit by, the, by a vehicle, right? Or for us to run out in the street. But that's what the gate is, the protection. So our protection, which is our leaders, he said the leaders are the gates, okay? They languish. So you're Al Sharpton. Oh, he wanted your damn money, right? And you got, who's it? Uh, what's, you got with T.D. Jakes, T.D. Snakes. All he wanted is your money, right? Creflo Dollar. All he wanted is your money to get him a million dollar plane. Hey, then you got Jesse Jackson. All he wanted is your money. He the one that gave you your nationality in 1986. He didn't want to say that you were the African American. How you older than how most of us is older than our nationality? You gotta ask yourself that. That that really should put a light bulb in your head. Read. They are black unto the ground. They are what? Black unto the ground. The Jews are black unto the ground. Okay? Read. And the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. The cry of Jerusalem is gone. So what color was Adam? The first man created here on earth. What color he had to be? He said, you had to be black. What about you say? You say black, you? You? What about you, brother? You say black too, right? So watch this right here. Read what you got. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God for a man of the dust of the ground. God for a man from the dust of the ground. Remember said that from the dust that you came, the dust you're going to go back when you die, right? That's why they bury you in the ground. You ain't supposed to get cremated, okay? You're supposed to have a burial, right? A, a, a right, rightful burial. Put you right back into the ground, okay? He said, he said, for a man from the dust of the ground. What color is the dirt? Brown, right? All these different shades of brown, but the deeper you go, the dog you get. So he was dark skinned. Read, read up at the top. And the Lord God, for a man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. He gave him the breath of life, which is law, statutes, and commandments. He gave him wisdom, okay? He didn't just give him breath just to breathe. He was already walking. He gave him law, statutes, and commandments to live by, okay? So, where you at? Read that. And man became a living soul. And then he became a living soul. Because right now, give me, go to Proverbs 21, 16. Because when we don't know who we are, and we run around here, we walk up and down the street, it's hot as I don't know what. You know what I'm saying? We came out here, you know what I'm saying? Because we love y'all. We want y'all to wake up, to repent, and come back to the Most High God. So, we making a sacrifice for of, of, of our bodies and our souls to help y'all out, okay? But when you walk up and down, Hello, us blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, Today, which are the Israelites, you make up the 12 tribes. Guess what? You, we spiritually disconnected from God. So this is what he meant when, when you when when you not keeping his commandments. Read Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 16. But when you walk up and down with us blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today, which are the Israelites, we make up the 12 tribes. Guess what? You we spiritually disconnected from God. So this is what he meant when when you when when you not keeping his commandments. Read. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That he said the man that you if you want out of the out of the scriptures right here, you're not keeping the commandments. You don't know who you are, you lost identity. He said you're gonna remain in the congregation of the dead. Everybody walking around here is dead. 
I, I'm telling you, that's you, you seen that show, The Walking Dead, the zombies? That's us. They make a mockery of us. We walking up and down the street, zombies. Think about what is it, the movie I Am Legend? Remember he was trying to get them back, trying to trying to find a cure for them. Hey, they're walking around crazy like monsters, eating everything. But he but he had he had he had the cure in him. So guess what? We got the cure right here, and we trying to kill y'all up to wake y'all up. So you come out of this congregation of the dead. Read it again. The man that wandereth out the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So now we fall away from the scriptures. That's when we go into the congregation of the dead. Okay, what you got for me to read that? Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 3. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? You, I know y'all heard about, you know, the prophet Ezekiel, right? Remember he was in the valley of the, of the shadow of death, right? This is the valley of the shadow of death today. This is where you see the dead bodies of the Israelites today, okay? The Israelites never disappeared. Somebody stole your identity. That's the biggest identity theft here on the earth, okay? Just like, just like you remember, um, you remember watching Drew Hill? You remember they had that, that song, These Are the Times That We Always For? You got the man in the iron mask. You had the evil twin portraying to be the good twin, but the good twin was locked up in the dungeon with an iron mask. That's us today, walking up and down here with an iron mask as a zombie, okay? Read that again. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? Oh, this is what, this, this is what uh, the angel was, was asking Ezekiel. He said, can these bones live? Meaning because they had no nourishment in them. They would dry as on the what? Just like you see a uh, desert or whatever. That's what, that's that valley of, of dry bones. That's us, read. And I answered, oh Lord God, thou knowest. He said, God, only you know. Only you know if these bones can live. I can't put them back to life, but he's going to show them something here. Read. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones. He said, prophesy unto, upon these bones. That's what we're doing. That's why you see us on every block down here. You see purple and gold out here preaching the word, showing the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans who they are today. We're bringing this out. This is the first time we ever came out here to teach. Okay, we gonna come out here and edify our people into Mr. Madness. Okay, read and say unto them, "O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord." That's what we say. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear this Bible right here. Okay, this is the word of the Lord. This way you gonna get the proper understanding. Okay, read. Thus said the Lord God unto these bones: Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you. Hear that? He said, I'm gonna cause these the breath to enter. Into you remember the breath? He gave Adam in the beginning, he said, four man from the dust of the ground and gave him breath of life, right? That breath of life is this understanding. This is the same breath right here. Us to eat this and do it, okay? Read. And ye shall live. And you shall what? Live. Now you won't be no more zombie no more walking up and down the street. That's what's going on with our brothers and sisters today. Read. And I will, I will lay sinews upon you. I'm going to put sinews upon you. I'm going to get you some gristles on your bones, okay? Now that's the sinews and, and the meat and all that stuff, the flesh that form Speaking to all of us. This is us. We Ezekiel today. Speaking to our brothers and sisters here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. This is the Valley of the Dry Bones. Read. And the breath came into them. And they lived. And they what? They lived. And stood up upon their feet. And they standing great. Army. That's us. We that great army. That's why he says with the army boots on. Okay? Hey sisters, hey, before y'all go real quick, come here for a minute. Come here. Where where y'all from? Virginia. You from Virginia? What part? Fairfax. Fairfax, Virginia. So you know we got a school in DC. Okay? Fairfax is right there with DC at. So if you can, we got our contact information on the back. We got a school in DC, a school in Baltimore. We got a school also in uh, Newport News, Virginia. And yourself, where you from? Chester, South Carolina. It's for who? Chester, South Carolina. Chester, South Carolina. We got school in Columbia, South Carolina. Okay, yeah, that's who hosting the, the uh, event here right now where we at. Okay, hey brother, what's your name? Who? Matt. Matt. Where you from, Matt? You from Fayetteville, right? So me, and you from the same place? But what's? Hey, we got school 45 minutes away in Benson, North Carolina. We IUIC Riley. Okay, so you gotta come, bro. You got to come and visit us, bro. Are you out here cooking or something? I see you got your glove on. What's going on? Give me that about on the Sabbath day. Give me that, you know. Yeah, get that report. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring something out to the both of y'all about the Lord's Sabbath day, okay? You got that um, um, Exodus 35 or you got Exodus 17? Go read that. 
Exodus chapter 16 and verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Today is the Lord's Sabbath. Today is the seventh day of the week. When you look on your calendar, that's the seventh day, okay? But it's a Saturday, Friday sundown, a Saturday sundown. Read. Bake that which you will bake today. Bake what you're going to bake today, okay? Meaning you got to cook your food the night before, all right? Or, or, or a day before, okay? Read. And see that you will see. He said seed means boil. If you're going to boil some eggs or something like that, and hey, you boil that thing the day before. Read. And that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. That's your leftovers, okay? That's what we're supposed to have. So you're supposed to be eating some cold food, okay? Food put in the refrigerator. Hey, you eat that thing or you got snacks, you got chips and things of that nature. Hey, eat that. You got vegetables, a salad, a sandwich, a sandwich. Come on, bro. Y'all know you don't grow up eating sandwiches, eating a man named sandwich. I know you don't ate that before. Read. Exodus 35 and verse 3. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon this Sabbath day. Right, you can't be cooking on the grill on the Sabbath day. This is come, this is when you break in the Sabbath. I know you out here selling plates. You know what I'm saying? I know you probably didn't know. But now you know, now you hold accountable. Read. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Right. Go now. Go to. I want you to go to uh, Genesis chapter two, real quick. So we show you how this day here. This was the first high holy day. Okay. Right? So you got to understand. Say, what? What are you going to do? I'm gonna ask you. What are you planning to do? Now you know. Now you learned this law right here. What are you going to do? Are you going to stop cooking or are you going to continue cooking? Because you can cook all day tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? When the sun go down, you can do all your cooking. Okay. Right? And the sun go down late. Come go down about 9:30, 9:45 now. Okay, you can do all the cooking and the selling you want to do. But right now, hey, this is the day to chill and rest and relax and get the word, okay? You didn't just come over here for no reason. The Most High brought you here, okay? Read. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. He said, God, remember, he created everything. God, I want you to start at verse 1, 2 and 1. 2 and 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. Oh, read it again. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. So now nah, this is when the Most High created everything, right? And also I'm going to deal with you too, brother, okay? You got some spirits on you too we got to deal with, so we can change that. Read. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. On the seventh day, God ended his work, right? So this is that seventh day, okay? Read. What did he do? Which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work. He rested from all his work, right? When he did all the creation, that's a lot of work he had to do. He said, I'm going to rest on this day right here. And I'm going to do something else with this day. Read. Which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day. He did what? Blessed the seventh day. And sanctified it. He sanctified it. He cleansed this day. This day special. How y'all sisters doing today? Y'all sisters got some time? Come talk to your brothers. And hey, come get this word right here, sisters. Don't just walk up and down like zombies. Come on, you too, brother. Don't walk up and down like no zombies, man. We're here for y'all. Read. Because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Right, because he created, he made the seventh day, right? Which is the Sabbath day. So in Spanish, the Saturday is called Sabado. Why is it called Sabado? Because it, it say the same thing of seventh day. Meaning the seventh day, okay? That's what Sabado means in Spanish, okay? And um, brother, I got a question for you. Uh, what's your name there? You said Sean? Sean, good to meet you. My name is Nahum, Sean. And what did you say your name was again? Roderick Archie Blue. Roderick Archie Blue. And you said you're from Chester, uh, South Carolina, right? RG Blue. RG Blue, okay. So, um, so real quick, I'm going to ask you, real, I'm, I'm going to bring something out real quick on you. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 11 real quick. So this is going to go for both of you two real quick. I'm going to dissect you both like a, like a doctor would do, okay? We're going to get dissected from the head to the feet. Read what you got. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Brother, I'm going to know what you two sis. Come on over here. I know y'all both together. Come over here. I ain't done with Hey, this going for y'all too. Okay, I'm just dealing with them too, but it's going to deal with the both of y'all. Read. Chapter 11 and verse 3. Read. Out of verse 1. Verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So we just like Paul, because Paul wrote this book, okay? We followers of Christ today. And we tell y'all, be followers of us. That come out of the scriptures, okay? And we're going to read along. Read. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. 
But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Now you know the head of every man is Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah, okay? Not that Caucasian image there, okay? That was given to us during slavery. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. Sis, did you know that? The head of the woman is the man. Did you know that? Are y'all married? Oh man, I got to deal with y'all all multiple ways. <laughs> Read. And the head of Christ is God. So the head of Christ is God. So let you know you got the most high God, you got Christ, you got man, and you got women. Okay, read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Every man that pray or he's prophesying. Well, we out here prophesying today. Y'all come in to hear the word, or even you walking up the street and you hear us bringing the scriptures out. What are you supposed to do? If you if I'm praying or if you prophesying and you hear the words, what do you you got your head covered, you dishonoring Christ. So what are you supposed to do? And what are you supposed to do? So what you gonna do? Huh? So no, let me see what you're gonna do. Why not? You can take your head off. Look, all of us got our head undone. Say that again. Verse 7. Read that real quick. Verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. The man indeed is not to cover his head. Why? When you're bringing the scriptures out, okay? Why? Read. For as much as he is the image and glory of God. You look like the most high God. He don't got his head covered. Christ, the, Christ, the Son, and you got the Father. They don't have their head covered. Okay? That's how we know they got woolly hair. The Bible tells you that. So what are you going to do there, bro? What are you going to do? That's what I'm talking about. Hey, clap it up. That's, that's the first sign of repentance. What are you going to do? You clapping it up. We got, hey, God is a, he's a God of action. Okay? Don't just be talking about it. What you going to do, man? Hey, some of us got hair, my hair receding. Hey, look, you, hey, you can take your hat off. You got to think about it. Why you don't want to take your hat off? What's wrong with you? There's a spirit behind that. Because why? Because you don't want it off. That means that's being rebellious. That's rebellious, okay? So I'm, I'm going to bring I'm gonna bring something out too so she knows as well. There's a law for you two in the same scripture. But we're going to deal with you too. Read, read that again. Verse, four, verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. When the woman, the only person supposed to have their head covered is the woman. Is you a woman? Huh? Am I praying? You prophesying right now. Yeah, you is. I'm prophesying. You ain't hearing the scriptures. We're in the midst of prophecy right now, young man. Nation is 